All right, welcome to the Rich Salenza Show, WTF are you talking about? Um, so today I'm going to get into um, a little bit about fashion here and what I think is going on, which I think is insane lately. And I don't mean to throw anyone under the bus as far as designers go or brands, but um, I grew up in the fashion industry. My grandfather owned the largest garment and tailoring shop in Chicago, um, and I've always loved fashion, high fashion. Uh, a lot of my family loves fashion. My father, uh, my uncles were designer. Uh, my cousin was a designer. And I don't know what the fuck is going on now more than ever with fashion, uh, especially luxury brands. And I travel actually all over the country. I, I'm in more malls than anyone I know in the country lately. I've been doing photography um, for my cousin's company and now I'm doing um, virtual tours for them for luxury brands. I'm not going to start naming who I've worked for any of that. But um, the point being is um, I love fashion. I think a lot of people do. Um, and I know a lot of straight dudes don't talk about fashion shows or fashion or brands like, you know, some of the top brands out there. And I think a lot of people have grown to love uh, if you love fashion, obviously, uh, especially if you're a guy. You may have liked Prada at one time. Uh, maybe in the 90s, you even liked Versace shirts. I don't know if it's as common as it used to be. Um, then you have from Louis Vuitton, obviously. You've got Armani, who's famous, and Hermes, Chanel. you got tons of different brands out there. And um, I'm not going to get into naming them all, obviously. Uh, D&G, Hugo Boss. It goes on and on. Even brands that a lot of guys are wearing now, even... You know, Calvin Klein, Michael Kors, Fendi, whatever it is, even if it's Rolex. But I'm talking about what's going on on the runway that I see in fashion. And I don't know who the fuck they're designing these clothes for. And I've known over the years, like you have, because I was in the industry, is they make clothes that are very eccentric and that are very unique and that stand out. That's what designers want to do on the runway. Most likely, you don't see people dressing on the streets for the most part um, when you see luxury brands, uh, models wearing a lot of their high-end couture clothing, uh, very few people wear them, uh, that type of clothing. Very few people could afford it. Um, but nonetheless, I'm, what I'm getting to, and I'm not even worrying about, that's kind of more or less, uh, when you think about high fashion couture, it's more men or more women driven. And I teach that in my, um, one of my uh, Mastering Self-Confidence programs, it's to help women break into the uh, fashion industry if they want to be a model or an actress. I also wrote a book called The Model Bible. But I'm talking about men now more than ever. I don't know. You know, it seems like, in my opinion, I was just discussing this with my father, it's either so insane or it's absolutely boring. I think that's where fashion kind of lies, uh, for the most part, in my opinion. Um, I mean, you know, you're watching these fashion shows and I don't know if these clothes, these high-end designers or high-end brands, what they're going after for the clothes for men. They almost look like they were, I don't know if they're considered unisex clothing, bisexual clothing, where it looks like a man or a woman uh, can wear this type of clothing, which maybe that is something in the future where um, I think a lot of people think can't say they think this way, but may see it going this way is where in the future there's almost going to be not a um, third type of person to a certain degree. And I don't mean transgender, gay, straight or any of that. I mean kind of somebody who will um, dresses in between, kind of. They don't dress necessarily like a man or how most men dress. And they don't dress strictly like as a lot of women would dress. They will find their own line of clothing regardless if they're a man or a woman or boy or girl, they're going to find clothing that I think may fit both areas. And I think that's the direction that I'm seeing. Kind of a lot of designers trying to create a new trend. Uh, do I think that'll work? Yeah, sure. Maybe in the future it will. I don't know about now. Uh, I also think a lot of stuff they're designing for men is insane. Uh, I even saw a corset. They were showing a line of corset, uh, different corsets for men. Um, obviously skirts, uh, dresses, and I'm not talking like if you, you, you know, you're Scottish and you're, you know, that's a traditional thing to wear that type of you know, outfit or whatever. I'm talking, um, you know, trying to either 
create a clothing line for men that want to dress like women but still kind of look like a man too. Which again, that's their right to do that. Of course. You know what I mean? But I think it's gone overboard in my opinion. I think what's happening slowly but surely, and again, what I believe, and I can't speak internationally, at least just in North America or maybe United States, is they're going so far that I don't even see people wanting that brand anymore. I don't even see a lot of people wanting to read their magazines as in like, say, I don't care if it's Vogue, GQ, L, Harper's Bazaar. I don't care what it is. Um, and I love those, you know, those type of magazines. But I'm looking at these brands and their photos thinking, what the fuck are you guys doing here? Like, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they are selling a lot of these things. And I travel all over the country, especially North America. And I don't see anybody dressing like this. I don't see anybody talking about this. And I remember the days of the 70s, 80s, even 90s, 2000s, where people like straight, gay, whatever, you know, even Versace um, or Prada or these type of brands, um, the guys liked them just as much as women. And straights, gay, it didn't matter. It kind of was a great looking brand. It was unique. There were pieces for everybody. But I'm starting to see that kind of go along the wake side. I don't see really that much interest in a lot of what they're creating. I think it's actually at times just, it's just so far-fetched. It's so extreme, like I said. And now let's go on the other extreme. I think when you go to men's style now, the ones that are designing for men, it's really boring. Nothing is really that unique. Um, I think these skinny lapels are weak. Um, these suits that are extremely fitted, uh, the ties were back to the baby, th kind of the thin ties. Um, I don't know. I think they keep, one of the reasons why I think they keep doing this is it's cheap. It costs less and less money for less and less materials. And they're trying to make it look like you're sleek or you're European. But the reality is I think it's just cheap because a lapel should be, have some substance to it. A tie should have some substance to it. And it kind of reminds me of the baby, uh, the, I'm sorry, the bathing suit environment where um, I realized this years ago, my cousin married into a family that was huge with bikinis. And, you know, I never realized this, but the the profit margins are monstro you know, mon they're monstrous regarding bikinis because a lot of bikinis are being built with scrap materials or, uh, you know, leftover materials from other materials and they make bikinis out of them. Uh, bikinis obviously are a material. You don't need a lot of material to create them, right? And they charge a substantial amount of money for them, amount of money. Uh, some are better than others, don't get me wrong material-wise, but they really, it's the least amount of material. I mean, it's underwear really a lot of times. So if you look at it like, uh, you know, it's you got a woman's uh, underwear or a bathing suit. Um, if you look at what a, like regular underwear and a bra would cost, and then you go to a bikini sometimes, they'll charge you $110, $130, $180 for a bikini, which is ridiculous. But again, I think that's what they're kind of doing with the men's clothing, is they keep making things smaller and smaller because it's cheaper, and they're kind of fooling the public. And also, a lot of the materials, I can't say materials, a lot of the designs are made for extremely thin men. And in our country, especially the United States, and I know the whole world, there's a whole world out there that isn't as heavy as we are, as obese as we are. But still, I see this with a lot of people all over the country uh, and all over the world where men aren't, you know what I mean, six feet tall or 5'10 and don't all weigh 165 pounds. It's kind of ridiculous. More men are fit than ever. More men are heavier than ever. More men are bigger than ever. More men are taller than ever. But th they're designing clothes that just don't make sense to me anymore. Uh, a lot of clothes I see on men, they look like they're wearing kids' clothes because everything is so small. And take myself, for instance, I can't wear a thin lapel. I don't even think a thin tie. And my shoulders are too wide and I'm just too, too thick. I mean, what is really going on in fashion? It, are they trying to force us to, I think to a certain degree, start accepting that? Or do we kind of just say, F you, we don't want your clothes anymore. And I think more and more people are saying, F you. And you keep hearing about retail going under uh, or luxury brands either. Some doing very well. Like, you know, you have brands like Lululemon or Tory Burch or some brands in luxury wear or whatever uh, that are doing really well. I think they struck a chord there that's wonderful. Um, but when it comes to men, I think it's different. 
I think now there's not really that uniqueness to why would I want to spend this extra money on this brand. You might do it for a watch or an accessory, maybe even a shoe. Like if you want a Prada gym shoe or whatever the hell you want to do, if you want to represent a Prada belt or something like that, Louis bag, for instance, those type of things. But you keep hearing about retail plummeting. And I think one of the reasons retail is plummeting is because you're not putting out good products, truthfully, to a lot of brands. And I don't just mean luxury brands. I mean brands in general. You go, I'm in tons of malls. I just see sloppy um, clothes. Uh, it's overpriced. People know that. That's why I think a lot more people are going to TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Ross. Um, even if, and I think sometimes the clothing there, not always, but sometimes there may be an issue with that clothing. It may not be sewn correctly or fit correctly, but they'd rather take the hit on that and pay a quarter of the cost than if you walked into Bloomies, Macy's, Neiman's, Nordstrom's, all these places, and you're charging people, especially men, a lot of money for standard clothes that do not, they just don't stand out. Uh, the shoes are the same type of shoes people have been wearing for many, many years. And I'm, believe me, I love uh, traditional type clothing. Uh, but it's there's something missing there, I think, in a lot of these uh, brands. I think it's you can kind of tell it's mass produced. And the truth is usually what I could get at a store like, say, Neiman's or Nordstrom's a lot of time. Uh, say a shoe that you don't know what style it is. You can go to another shoe store like... I don't know if you want to say Aldo or I don't care what type of shoe, mid-level or lower-end shoe store, even in your local urban neighborhood, you can get a cooler-looking shoe more for a third of the price, maybe even a quarter of the price, and different colors, different designs, things that stand out. It's It's been amazing for me because I love shopping at consignment stores, uh, second-hand stores, uh, vintage stores. My The clothes that I wear now that are my cheapest clothes get the most compliments. Especially when it comes to shoes and suits. If I wear vintage suits, I get all the compliments in the world. If I wear something new or modern, people don't even take notice of it. It's almost boring and bland, which I found quite interesting. And I think when you think about real style, uh, like the Rat Pack, or even the 20s, the 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever, even when the 70s came out, that had, like, they made statements that men can really gravitate towards. I mean, some may be a little eccentric, but it was still cool. And then the 80s came out. It was kind of a unique type of fashion, you know, situation going on there. But I think after the 2000s, um, the other thing is men, kind of the standout now is kind of frowned upon. So if you don't wear your standard blacks, whites, grays, I call it a black and white movie, um, Actually, my friend told me about that. Actually, he named it that. Uh, then you're, you're, if you dress a certain way or represent yourself a certain way, you're actually frowned upon like you're, you're gloating or you're who the hell do you think you are, right? So now things keep backing off, backing off, backing off before you know it. You know, it might as well be casual every day. Right, even in the workplace, going out to dinner, and I see it constantly. I live in Florida, I'm in Vegas a lot, the West Coast, anywhere you're seeing guys going out to very high end steak places in shorts and sandals, and uh, a lot of them looking like a mess. Some of them just got off the golf course, and I know a lot have money, and you're welcome to dress any way you want, but I see that dress codes for the most part have just kind of been weeded out. Um, and I'm not saying that there's still not high-end places in major cities that don't allow you to dress a certain way when you come into their establishment. But I think now with social media and um, people having their own voice uh, and celebrities kind of dressing more and more loose, I guess you could say, um, they kind of get away with anything. You can really look like a slob. I'd hate to say that a lot of times or be next to people because if, if I'm fine dining and I'm thinking I'm going to a place that's a high-end place and I got... You know, four guys off a golf course that smell like shit from being outside and drinking and smoking cigars next to me. Shorts with their feet are dirty. It's kind of ridiculous. And I see that in the airlines as well. Again, I don't know how there should be some type of dress code now with airlines. I think they're afraid. It's gone from where it used to be kind of a traditionally that you, you know, you represented yourself correctly. Now I literally see guys either in pajamas uh, and I don't mind shorts as long as, you, you know, whatever. If you're wearing shorts and sandals, whatever. I see guys walking up and down the plane uh, barefoot, uh, T-shirts ripped. Uh, it's a mess. And I just don't know where the future of fashion on a whole is going or what is going to be...
consider the right way to dress or what's proper. And again, you have the right to dress any which way you want, but I do think you have, uh, you've got to respect yourself enough to know your environment. And I see this at weddings too. You see people wearing now like sweaters or their clothes are just totally wrinkled. Uh, they're wearing just regular style uh, dress shirts uh, with even tight skinny jeans or, I mean, it's just, have some respect for the event you're going to, okay? And I think also if if you want to go so far left as a designer or far right, whatever your thing is, um, kind of think about other people as well is what I should say because I think they're losing out on that. And I think a lot of people also when they're going out, they're forgetting how it once in a while it is really nice to dress up. I can assure you, you'll feel better about yourself right? And usually the ones you're with, if you're dating a girl or you're engaged or married, I promise you, they're going to respect you a lot more by the way you're dressing. And your girlfriend or wife, whoever, may not say it a lot to you. But I promise you, if you start dressing up, you're going to most likely enhance your relationship. Because most women I know, not all, obviously, they like a sharp dressed man. They like somebody who takes care of themselves. I'm not telling you to get out there and overdress, make your girlfriend look bad or you know, you're dressed up and she isn't, feel that out. But start dressing right, like appropriately, I think, for the right um, event or even going out to dinner because we're always coming up with excuses. I realize more and more, like, I'm only going here. I'm only going there. I'm only going, on a, you know, I'm only going out to dinner. Well, a lot of times, even when you leave the house, you don't even know where you're going, but you're basing a lot on how you're dressed and how you feel. If you dressed up once in a while, you'd feel like going to better places or different places. But a lot of us are always so casual. I can't say myself, but a lot of people that they're only talking or they only, they kind of exclude themselves. Now, I think that's a cop out too with a lot of men. They dress a certain way so they know they can only go to certain restaurants so they don't have to spend a lot of money, right? And believe me, women aren't fools. They catch on to that. And if you plan on dating like new women or whatever, learn to have some style. Learn to dress a little better than most guys that they've been with dressed. It's going to go a long way. Again, I'm not telling you to run out to luxury brands and that you have to spend tons of money. Um, in my Mastering Self-Confidence program, I actually talk about, I give all these hints on where to find affordable clothing, how to shop for them. Um, where to find them, obviously, how much money to spend on them, all these different things. That goes with hygiene and fitness advice too. But anyways, the whole thing about this was really what's happening to fashion. That's what I wanted to make this podcast about because I think a lot of guys out there could relate to this more than ever. And I was arguing with my dad. My dad kept saying, you know, the reason um, these designers are doing this is because they want to be so unique that only a few people um, or only so many people at the balls will dress like this. And I kind of argued with him but then we were watching a new special very similar to this like what the hell is going on with fashion and then it kind of hammered him down like yeah and I even asked him really because he used to buy Gucci he, actually his license plates on his cars Gucci one I says when was the last time you really went out and brought a Gucci product and he was stumbled I said here I'm going to show you Gucci I showed him online he was even baffled uh, I mean there were a couple of cool things don't get me wrong but for the most part he was like in shock by what he was seeing and he was truly raised in the garment fashion industry. Um, again, you have the right to do that, designers or brands out there. I'm not here to change your brand. Obviously, you're billion-dollar brands. You're extremely successful. Uh, but I'm not sure as far as retail or those type of brands in the future. Uh, maybe they'll always be around. God bless if they are. I won't be shocked if a lot just end up disappearing. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something. If you do want to start buying luxury brands, I'm telling you right now, go vintage. I really think they look a lot better. They're a lot classier. I think they look a lot more respectful. And um, they just have a different ambiance when you in a different look and feel. Everything about vintage clothing, the more you kind of go back, the more unique it was and how rich it was even the materials and the designs the shoes even the hats the coats they were rich now it seems like it's less and less and it costs more and more money and i really think they're pulling you know what do they call it they're pulling that shit over your eyes because 
it really doesn't look better. They're trying to convince you it looks better. Basically, they're giving you less and less of something. And because it's a certain brand, they want to charge you more and more money because the reality is it's costing them more and more money either for, say, for instance, rent. With Because the reality is a lot of these brands have their own stores all over the world and rent keeps getting higher end and uh, someone's got to pay that rent or uh, everything's more money in general, just in general. So they want you to pay for it when it really doesn't look as good as it once looked. And I think cars too have that. The difference is with cars is the interior now is what really kicks ass. It's not the outside for the most part. Most cars now are selling you with all the things inside of the car from the radio and the backup screen and you could charge your phone without having to plug it in, all these different things. A lot of cars on the outside look like shit where if you go back in the past, I think a lot of the outside of the cars were amazing, but they didn't have the technology inside the car. But uh, that's another thing I think cars then again really find a car that looks great on the outside and inside and um, a lot of vintage cars again I think for the outside look great if you can incorporate or spend a little money on the inside uh, putting some things in like a newer radio or things like that I think it's just a better car I think they're better built cars again for a lot less money even if you get them used I think the metal on them is better I think the seating um, the engines may be older, obviously, and they may not be caught up as far as that goes technology-wise, but the car on the whole, I just think, looks better. Um, it just seems safer to me a lot of times. Uh, now I can go up to a car and almost put my hand right through the metal, or, I mean, anything. The bumpers, they're very weak. Anyways, I don't even know how the hell we got on cars, but um, my whole point is don't be taken advantage of when it comes to fashion and really start, don't, like I always say, don't get caught up in following the trends. Start learning how to set a trend, okay? All right, I'm going to end it on that note. This is Rich Salenza again with the Rich Salenza Show. Uh, thanks for joining on my podcast, WTF. Are you talking about? With Second City the way it used to be. And also, I went to Improv Olympic, and I haven't been to one in L.A., and I'm friends with the girl who runs that. And that didn't seem to be as sharp as it once was. And I don't know if it's just we're used to improv is just not once what it once was. Uh, or is this funny? Or these type of performers? Or maybe I've just seen too many comedians or I've seen too many performances on stage. But nonetheless, um, sometimes I can catch uh, you know a funny comedian here and there. Who did I catch recently? Oh, yeah. Harlan Williams. Uh he was really funny, actually, on stage. He was good. I see Sebastian all over the country because my girlfriend and my buddy love that guy. And he is funny. You know, he's really he's a Chicago guy. Um, I see him at the comedy store when he was really uh, a nobody. I would see, you know, I'd go in there. And then on Saturday nights or Friday nights, too, even, you can catch 10, 15, even up to 20 different comedians a night. And they are all unbelievable. They usually do a set. It could be five minutes to seven minutes, roughly. But I used to see him when he was kind of a nobody then, obviously. I caught him in Chicago when he just started, because he's from Chicago, the suburbs. And he just started to break out. I saw him, was it Zanies in Rosemont? And uh, then he really broke out. And uh, then he's been everywhere. But I caught him in Fort Lauderdale not long ago. He's really funny, for my taste, Sebastian. And uh, it's interesting, because if I watched a show like Last Comic Standing... Um, from the past. I don't watch that show anymore. I don't even know if it's on the air. I know the dude who produces that actually. Uh, but he, those comedians, tons of them from obviously uh, the comedy store, the store and the Laugh Factory. A lot of those comedians are auditioning for that show, trying to win it. And it's amazing if you ever get the chance to be in Southern Cal, LA area, catch out either one of those area uh, one of those places on a weekend you'll see some of the best comedians in the world and even joe rogan pops in there they all pop in there um and you, they'll just come in and do sets you don't be surprised if you see uh you know Chappelle pop in there chris rock pops in there silverman uh all these type of people and the laugh factory is a little more organized they have already a group of like say you know three or four people set uh, in for that show for that night where the comedy store is a little looser. Sure, they have a set sometimes, but you can even walk out of that room and go into another room and be shocked on who you'll run into. You know, don't be surprised if you see Tim Allen just standing around doing some material. So I'm going to end it on this note. My last story regarding comedians. I was actually not long ago, me and my buddy, it was a blizzard uh, in Chicago. 
and I was in town and my cousin called me and said, Rich, I have tickets to, I think it's Zany's in Rosemont. And she says, uh, I got some tickets, go check it out. But she goes, I can't make it. And I said, all right. And then it was a blizzard. So we, I was like, I was on the fence. I was not going to probably go, but I'm like, oh my God, my cousin gave me these tickets. And I don't want to be an asshole and say I didn't go either. So we went and it was snowing hard this day in Chicago. No one is there. I don't know if you've ever been to this area of Rosemont where they have a bunch of different things going on. They have nightclubs, they have a skating rink, uh, where well, they got bowling there, all these different things in this new Rosemont area of Illinois. And we walk in and there was only a group of like 10 firemen and me and my buddy. And so we sit down. And we were just ordering, like, I think I ordered a hot chocolate or a coffee. And then he might have ordered a tea. It was freezing out. And right off the bat, they put us up front. And they asked me, actually, when we went to sit, do you mind being up front? I said, no, they could rip on us all they want. Because, you know, if you go to a comedy store, you sit up front, you're going to get shredded. Uh, I think I just got... Uh, Paulie Shore actually ripped on me and my girlfriend, actually. Last time I was at the comedy store, they put us up front there, too. But in this case, so we're watching... The fire department, I guess, was there because they had some tickets as well, but nobody else was there. I mean, if there was like 25 people there, I'd be shocked. So the comedians are basically just talking to me and my buddy and the fire department, one after another. And then their headliner comes out, and I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. And he's an older gentleman. He's got to be 70-something years old. I knew I recognized him because me and my father used to book him. And I saw him like 10 years ago on Last Comic Standing, and I was watching with my daughter, and I said, you know what? You're not going to believe this. We used to hire him. He's from... I don't know, Woodstock or Crystal Lake, Illinois, and blah, blah, blah. And, of course, they say where you're from, blah, blah, blah. He said it. So they said, wonderful. He was great. They didn't accept him, though. They said he was too rough, too blue. I guess they couldn't even show all the material because his language is rough, and he's funny. He kind of plays the old dirty man, and it's good. So to make a long story short, he's ripping on us, and we're really not laughing. And he is funny. I'm not saying he's not funny. But it was a long day. I think we're just ready to get home ourselves. But he started saying, hey, hey, you know, he was calling us every name in the book, uh, ripping on us. And the fireman got a kick out of it, too, calling us because we were kind of dressed very nice. I don't know, he was calling us all these different, you know, gay, you fag, all this crazy shit. And then finally he says, you know, this material ain't going to get any better, guys. You know, and I, I never heckle a comedian. And I said, yeah, I know. I've already heard this numerous times. I kind of caught him off guard. And he's like, who the hell are you? And I said, hey, do you remember Rich Salenza from King's Row, you know, the, the nightclub or whatever bar? And he goes, yeah. And I go, well, I'm his kid. And what was funny is he remembered I used to have an LP because I lived in LaGrange Park at the time. And he called me a little prick when I met him. He says, you were a prick then and you're a prick now. Like he, we knew each other, which was kind of interesting because we haven't seen each other in so long. And um, we kind of started going back and forth. I said, your material sucks now, just like it did back then. And then he would rip on me. And I says, oh, I could see you're still stuck in the same ship spot you were, you know, 35 years ago, playing in the same gigs for no money. And then he says, you better believe it. You know, we're going back and forth. It was like we were kind of dancing. And it was kind of funny. And then he's, at, he's like, after the show, come and meet me. So I went and met him in the back. He's selling his DVDs. And it just broke my heart because I realized a lot of comedians, and I used to dream about maybe being a comedian or something, and we were talking about the past, how he never broke out of Illinois, he tried to go to L.A., New York, he just didn't have the money or time, he just never caught his break. And I knew him when he was probably in his 40s, and then obviously now he's in his mid seven. he might be his early 70s. And, you know, just talking to him, you know, comedians go through a lot in their life. It's very hard. I think it's one of the hardest professions in the world. Um, that lifestyle uh, that they get caught up in. It's not what people think. Obviously, you're in a different place. And I live this lifestyle myself, being in a different hotel every night. But they really, uh, but not being in clubs where people are heckling you or making fun of you if your material's not working. You can have a great night and then a horrible night, a great audience, then nobody show. You know, you hear these stories about people like literally performing and there's no one even in the audience. You're kind of performing for the bartender, the waitresses. Nonetheless, um, I still love comedians, so just kind of want to give you my input on that. But I wish everyone the best. Thanks for joining in on the Rich Salenza Show podcast and uh, WTF are you talking about?